Rich.com presents Rich Dad, Poor Dad. What the rich teach their kids about money that the poor and middle class do not. Written by Robert Kiyosaki and published in 1997. Fast forward 20 years since first making waves in the personal finance arena. It has since become the number one personal finance book of all time. Translated into dozens of languages and sold around the world. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is Robert's story of growing up with two dads. His real father and the father of his best friend. He's Rich Dad, and the ways in which both men shaped his thoughts about money and investing. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Chapter 1, Lesson 1, The Rich Don't Work for Money. The poor and the middle class work for money. The rich have money work for them. True learning takes energy, passion, and a burning desire. It is fear that keeps most people working at a job. Most people become a slave to money. Learn to have money work for you. Learn to have money work for you. Too many people are focused too much on money and not their greatest wealth, which is their education. Pay yourself first. So many people say, oh, I'm not interested in money, yet they'll work for a job for eight hours a day. Intelligence solves problems and produces money. Money without financial intelligence is money soon gone. Taxes. You're taxed when you earn, you're taxed when you spend, you're taxed when you save, and you're taxed when you die. Chapter 2. Lesson 2. Why teach financial literacy? It's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. If you want to be rich, you need to be financially literate. You must know the difference between an asset and a liability and buy assets. Rich people acquire assets, the poor and middle class acquire liabilities, but they think they are assets. If you want to be rich, you've got to read and understand numbers. The rich acquire assets and the poor and middle class acquire liabilities. Assets put money in your pocket. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. This is the cash flow pattern of an asset. An asset putting money into income. This is the cash flow pattern of a liability. Liability, mortgage, going to expenses, which pays for the mortgage payment, property tax, insurance, maintenance, and utilities. This is the cash flow pattern of a poor person. Money working for a job, going into income and salary, then going straight to expenses, then going out again. This is the cash flow pattern of a middle class person. Money coming in from a job, going into the income of a salary, going into expenses, then liabilities, then going back out again. This is the cash flow pattern of a wealthy person. Their assets, which is real estate, stocks, bonds, notes, and intellectual property, goes into income through rental income, dividend, interest, and royalties. Assets to income. Illiteracy, both in words and numbers, is the foundation of financial struggle. It is the cash flow that tells a story. It is the story of how a person handles their money, what they do after they get their money in their hand. The number one expense for most people is taxes. A person can be highly educated, professionally successful, and financially illiterate. Looking at the graph through Rich Dad and Poor Dad, you will see Rich Dad has liabilities, which is the home, and the poor people, such as the Poor Dad, see their balance sheet as an asset with their home. Looking at the graph again, Poor Dad's financial statement, you have income and expenses balanced, and down the bottom, you have a small asset with lots of liability. Going to the right, you'll see Rich Dad's financial statement has 75% income, 25% expenses, with an asset column which is far greater than the smaller liability column. Why the rich get richer. A review of my dad's financial statement shows why the rich get richer. The asset column generates more than enough income to cover expenses, with the balance reinvested into the asset column. The asset column continues to grow, and therefore the income it produces grows with it. The result is the rich get richer. A fool and his money is one big party. Their spending habits have caused them to seek more income. More money seldom solves someone's money problems. Intelligence solves problems. 
If you find you have dug yourself into a hole, stop digging. Remember the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. He who has the gold makes the rules. According to psychiatrist, the fear of public speaking is caused by the fear of ostracism. The fear of standing out. The fear of criticism. The fear of being an outcast. The fear of being different prevents most people from seeking new ways to solve their problems. It is only when we as humans look into the mirror do we find truth. The fear of ostracism that causes people to conform and not question commonly accepted opinions or popular trends. An intelligent person hires people who are more intelligent than they are. Schooling process actually discourages creativity. The schooling process actually discourages creativity. Schools were designed to produce good employees instead of employers. When it comes to money, high emotions tend to lower financial intelligence. Money has a way of making every decision emotional. Because they have no money to invest, they simply do not invest. Investing in income producing assets. The rich buy assets, the poor only have expenses, and the middle class buy liabilities they think are assets. And chapter 3, lesson 3, mind your own business. The rich focus on their asset columns, while everyone else focuses on their income statements. Focus on your asset column. Financial struggle is often directly the result of people working all their life for someone else. The mistake is becoming what you study is that too many people forget to mind their own business. Your business revolves around your asset column as opposed to your income column. The rich focus on their asset column while everyone else focuses on their income statements. Cling to their jobs. Life is sometimes tough when you do not fit the standard profile. Keep your daytime job, but start buying real assets, not liabilities or personal effects that have no real value once you get them home. Keep your expenses low, reduce your liabilities, and diligently build a base of solid assets. Real assets fall into several different categories. Number one, businesses that do not require my presence. I own them, but they are managed or run by other people. If I have to work there, it's not a business, it becomes my job. Number two is stocks, three is bonds, four mutual funds, five income generating real estate, and six notes, IOUs, and seven royalties from intellectual property such as music, scripts, patents, or anything else that has value, produces income or appreciates and has a ready market. An employee with a safe, secure job without financial aptitude has no escape. The first lesson of having money work for me, as opposed to working for money, is really all about power. If you work for money, you give the power up to your employer. If money works for you, you keep and control the power. Start minding your own business, keep your daytime job, but start buying real assets, not liabilities. And chapter four, lesson four, the history of taxes and the power of corporations. You need to know the law and how the system works. The diagram shows how the corporate structure sits outside your personal income statement and balance sheet. You have a corporation income statement, which has, as you can see, you have now a corporation income statement. What you wanna do is have your assets going into your income in the corporation income statement, and then having your expenses coming out of that account as well. Each dollar in my asset column was a great employee working hard to make more employees and buy the boss a new Porsche. Be smart and you won't be pushed around as much. If you know you're right, you're not afraid of fighting back. By relying solely on a paycheck from a corporate employer, I would be a docile cow ready for milking. Why not own the latter? Idea of owning my own corporation. Financial IQ is made up of knowledge from four broad areas of expertise. Number one is accounting. Number two is investing. Number three is understanding markets. And number four is the law. In summary, business owners with corporations. They earn, they spend, they pay taxes. Employees who work for corporations. They earn, pay taxes, then spend, 
Do you see the nuance? And chapter 5, lesson 5, the rich invent money. Often in the real world, it's not the smart who get ahead, but the bold. Not the smart that get ahead, but the bold. The one thing that holds us back is some degree of self-doubt. It's not so much the lack of technical information that holds us back, but more the lack of self-confidence. In the real world, outside of academics, something more than just grades is required. I have heard it called guts, balls, audacity, bravado, cunning, daring, tenacity, and brilliance. This factor, whatever is labeled, ultimately decides one's future much more than the school grades. I recognize that it was excessive fear and self-doubt that were the greatest detractors of personal genius. It's not the smart that get ahead, but the bold. It's, if fear is too strong, then genius is suppressed. Take risks to be bold, to let the genius convert that fear into power and brilliance. Most people only know one solution, work hard, save and borrow. The more real you think money is, the harder you will work for it. If you can grasp the idea that money is not real, you will grow rich faster. If you can grasp the idea that money is not real, you will grow rich faster. The single most powerful asset we all have is our mind. If it is trained well, it can create enormous wealth in what seems to be an instant. An untrained mind can only create extreme poverty that last lifetimes by teaching it to their families. Money did not change hands, agreements did. Financial intelligence is made up of these four main technical skills. Number one, financial literacy, the ability to read numbers. Number two, investment strategies, the science of making money. Number three, the market, supply and demand. And number four, the law, the awareness of accounting, corporate, state and national rules and regulations. I recommend playing within the rules. The more I learn, and there is a lot to learn, the more money I make, simply because I gain experience and wisdom as the years go on. Great opportunities are not seen with your eyes, they are seen with your mind. My overall philosophy is to plant seeds inside my asset column. Invest more in their financial education than in the stock, real estate or other markets. The smarter you are, the better chance you have of beating the odds. We learn by making mistakes. We learn to walk by falling down. If we never fell down, we would never walk. Unfortunately, the main reason most people are not rich is because they are terrified of losing. Winners are not afraid of losing, but losers are. Failure is a part of the process of success. People who avoid failure also avoid success. It's what you know more than what you buy. Investing is not buying, it's more a case of knowing. It is what you know that is your greatest wealth. It is what you know that is your greatest wealth. It is what you do not know that is your greatest risk. They are one skill away from great wealth. Most people need only to learn and master one skill and their income will jump exponentially. And chapter six, lesson six, work to learn. Don't work for money. Job security meant everything to my educated dad. Learning meant everything to my rich dad. You want to know a little about a lot. The hardest part of running a company is managing people. Job is an acronym for just over broke. Job is an acronym for just over broke. Most workers live within their means. Workers work hard enough to not be fired and owners pay just enough so that workers won't quit. Education is more valuable than money in the long run. Education is more valuable than money in the long run. The world is full with talented poor people. Domain management skills needed for success are, number one, the management of cash flow. Two, the management of systems, including yourself and time with family. And number three, the management of people. The most important specialized skills are sales and understanding markets. It is communication skills such as writing, speaking, and negotiating that are critical to a life of success. In addition to being good learners, sellers, and marketers, we need to be good teachers as well as good students. To be truly rich, we need to be able to give as well as to receive. Practice to give first. 
The more they gave, the more they received. Chapter 7, Overcoming Obstacles. The primary difference between a rich person and a poor person is how they manage fear. Five main reasons why financially illiterate people may still not develop abundant asset comms. Fear, criticism, laziness, bad habits, arrogance. The greatest reasons for lack of financial success was because most people played it too safe. For most people, the reason they don't win financially is because the pain of losing money is far greater than the joy of being rich. Failure inspires winners. Failure defeats losers. If you have any desire of being rich, you must focus. You must focus. Put a lot of eggs in a few baskets. Do not do what the poor and middle class people do. Put their eggs in many baskets. Our doubts often paralyze us. Doubt is expensive. Cynics criticize and winners analyze. They don't make money because they choose to not lose money. Laziness by staying busy. Laziness by staying busy. Our world progresses because we all desire a better life. Eleanor Roosevelt said it best. Do what you feel in your heart to be right, for you'll be criticized anyway. You'll be damned if you do and damned if you don't. Rich Dad believed that the words, I can't afford it, shut down your brain. How can I afford it? Opened up possibilities, excitement, and dreams. If I pay myself first, I get financially stronger, mentally and physically. And chapter 8, getting started. There is gold everywhere. Most people are not trained to see it. 10 steps as a process to develop your God-given powers, powers over which only you have control. Number 1. Find a reason greater than reality, the power of spirit. Most people choose not to be rich. Number 2. Make the daily choices, the power of choice. Our spending habits reflect who we are. Our spending habits reflect who we are. Poor people simply have poor spending habits. Arrogance is ego plus ignorance. Just because you have no money, it should not be an excuse to not learn. Invest first in education. In reality, the only real asset you have is your mind. Arrogant people rarely read or buy tapes. Why should they? They are the center of the universe. Intelligence combined with arrogance equals ignorance. And number three, choose friends carefully. The power of association. Chickens of a feather agree together. And number four, master a formula and then learn a new one. The power of learning quickly. A truly intelligent person accumulated ideas. Listening is more important than talking. If that were not true, God would have given us two ears and only one mouth. One of the hardest things about wealth building is to be true to yourself and be willing not to go along with the crowd. Master a formula and then learn a new one. You become what you study. And number five, pay yourself first. The power of self-discipline. If you cannot get control of yourself, do not try to get rich. The lack of personal self-discipline is that is number one, delineating factor between the rich and the poor and the middle class. The lack of personal self-discipline. The world will push you around. The world pushes people around, not because other people are bullies, but because the individual lacks internal control and discipline. People who lack internal fortitude often become victims of those who have self-discipline. The three most important management skills necessary to start your own business are, number one, the management of cash flow. Number two, the management of people. And number three, the management of personal time. People who pay themselves first. We have job, going into income and salary, then going straight into assets to save and invest, then going back to expenses to pay for taxes, rent, and food. People who pay everyone else. Money comes into the job, goes into the income and salary, goes straight into the expenses, which is taxes, rent, and food, and goes straight out and does not see the assets column. Having the guts to go against the tide and get rich. Don't get into large debt positions that you have to pay for. Keep your expenses low. Build up assets first. Poor people have poor habits. Poor people have poor habits. A common bad habit is innocently called dipping into savings. 
The rich know that savings are only used to create more money, not to pay bills. If you're not tough inside, the world will always push you around anyway. And number six, pay your brokers well. The power of good advice. Limit my losses to only the money I have in at that time. And number seven, be an Indian giver. The power of getting something for nothing. Learn how to have money work for you. The sophisticated investor's first question is, how fast do I get my money back? Too often today, we focus on borrowing money to get the things we want instead of focusing on creating money. Remember, the easy road often becomes hard and the hard road often becomes easy. The easy road often becomes hard and the hard road often becomes easy. And number eight, use assets to buy luxuries. The power of focus. To be the master of money, you need to be smarter than it. When it comes to investing, too many people make it sound hard. Instead, find heroes who make it look easy. And number nine, choose heroes, the power of myth. And number 10, teach and you shall receive, the power of giving. Chapter nine, still want more? Here are some to-dos. Stop doing what is not working and look for something new to do. Find someone who has done what you want to do. Make lots of offers. When I want a piece of real estate, I look at many properties and generally write an offer. If you don't know what the right offer is, neither do I. That is the job of the real estate agent. They make the offers. I do as little work as possible. Most sellers ask too much. It is rare that a seller will actually ask a price that is less than something is worth. Make offers. People who are not investors have no idea what it feels like to be trying to sell something. Search, offer, reject. Negotiate and accept are all parts of the process of almost anything in life. You need to know what you're looking for and then go look for it. Profit is made when you buy, not when you sell. Profit is made when you buy, not when you sell. I shopped at the foreclosure department of a bank. I paid a $500 for a class on how to do this. Buy the pie and cut it into pieces. Small thinkers don't get the big breaks. If you want to get rich, uh, think bigger first. Small people remain small because they think small, act alone, or don't act at all. Learn from history. All the big companies on the stock exchange started out as small companies. Action always beats inaction. Action always beats inaction. The important words being done and do. You must take action before you can receive the financial rewards. Act now. Without financial training, we all too often use the standard formula to get through life, such as work hard, save, borrow, and pay excessive taxes. Today, we need better information. Money is only an idea. If you want more money, simply change your thinking. Every self-made person started small with an idea, then turned it into something big. The same applies with investing. It takes only a few dollars to start and grow it into something big. It is what's in your head that determines what's in your hands. It's what's in your head that determines what is in your hands. Today, don't play it safe, play it smart. The three incomes, earned income, passive income, portfolio income. The key to becoming wealthy is the ability to convert earned income into passive income and or portfolio income as quickly as possible. The taxes are higher on earned income. The least taxed income is passive income. All a real estate investor does is convert earned income into passive and portfolio income. You would never learn to ride a bicycle by only reading a book. Warren Buffett says, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. If you do not know those differences in the three incomes and do not learn the skills on how to acquire and protect those incomes, you will probably spend your life earning less than you could and working harder than you should. Earned income is money you work for and passive and portfolio income is money working for you. The main reason people struggle financially is because they spend years in school but learned nothing about money. The result is people learn to work for money but never learn to have money work for them. Take responsibility for your finances or take orders all your life. You're either a master of money or a slave to it. And that's a wrap on Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Subscribe to our channel now for future summaries and check out our website bestbookbits.com 
for the written and audio summary. To buy the book, use our website store where you'll find this book and hundreds more to browse and purchase. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Have yourself an amazing day and remember to subscribe for more.